this is really what I dreamed of when we first moved here. It used to be this rocky, horrible, dry. Hey guys, so I wanted to walk you through how I prep on a daily basis because I feel like um, I am someone who over prepares and the last couple of years I've worked really hard on not living my life worried about disasters or um, hardships, but instead to look at my daily life and say, what could I do to make my daily life healthier and happier and more abundant? And so I'm gonna walk you through some of those preps today and you can call them preps or you can just say, this is Julie's daily life and how she stays happy. So behind me, you're gonna see, this is a really big pile of sawdust and I use it for bedding for my animals. And then when they're done with it, I use it in my hotbeds. And I'll try and show you some of the clips of the hotbed. And again, it's full of wood mulch that had been pooped on by the chickens and the ducks. So that's what the wood mulch is. And then Which is just a really, really big compost pile that heats up and then I plant things on top of it which means that I can have produce and food for my family. I planted in February. It's producing by the 1st of April. Over here, this is the last of the 2019 hay. And I just barely bought this. We brought our horses in. There you go. So knowing that I was gonna have a few extra big mouths to feed, meant that I went on Craigslist and I found the last of the hay that was dry and good hay and they delivered it. One thing I will say for those of you who um, may not be the Rocky Balboa uh, Hercules types, uh, when you have the money to pay for people to help you so that you don't overdo it, make sure to have people help you. I had this delivered I didn't try to go pick it up. When I was first starting to have a farm and a garden and things like that, I would save every penny that I possibly could by going and filling things up myself with a shovel. And it ended up destroying my health in many ways. And so now if I have a need for something and I have the money to pay for help and automation and assistance, I do it. Both of these things were delivered. As you can hear, we have many sources of manure and a lot of those animals are more useful to us currently than horses. We have milk goats and we have ducks and rabbits and uh, chickens. So find a source of manure and uh, find a way to enjoy uh, those animals, whatever they are. And make sure to have enough feed on hand that if there is ever um, an, economic <laughs> an economic downturn that you can afford to feed them and that you're not uh, scrambling at the last minute to make sure you have enough. I need to go get some more hay. Come on. This is my greenhouse and we had to get a particular kind of greenhouse because the wind in our area is called a tough greenhouse with a T-U-F-F. -F. And we've had it for five years now and the plastic is finally giving out. So part of my preps have been to order new plastic. This will see us through the rest of the growing season this year. But I wanted to make sure I had on hand plastic for next year so that I'm not scrambling at the last minute if there's issues with supply lines. All right, so in our greenhouse in the winter, we keep our rabbits. This is our one mama. We had all young does this year. Uh, no mature breeding does until recently. And we kind of tested and trialed and saw how each one did and kept the, our favorites and then sold the others. The reason for this is I don't want to hoard animals. 
uh, animals need to be well fed and well taken care of in order to be able to produce well. So if you have more animals than you can afford to feed, they're not really feeding, uh, filling your freezer. What they're doing is they're, st <sighs> they're strain on you, they're strain on your budget. And I think when we don't limit our numbers down to what we can economically and physically care for well, it affects our health. All right, these. This is our new batch, and I really don't like that they're not in a box. Um, even though they have really full little bellies, what you want to see in a baby is a really full little belly. That means Mama is feeding them. Um, dairy is a big part of our diet. Something sounds like it's touching. Um, dairy is a big part of our diet, so we have goats. I uh, was raised with cows and goats when I was a kid, and it was hard to feel like you could justify um, the difference in feed cost and the cost to buy the animal and that kind of thing. And then you have to have the trailers to get them to the vet and to the bull, whereas with goats, if I really have to, I can stick them in the back of a, min a minivan. All right, so we are making bacon chowder with our own homemade bacon. The fire's going. Actually, usually I have our little fan, but you can also just use a conventional fan. Let's turn that on to get the heat moving through the house. This is some of our firewood. Again, the reason we have this much is because we have a long cold winter and firewood is not always immediately available at all times of the year. And so I'm stocking up for next year. There they go. Make sure to put the baby in the backyard, please, so there's not an yep. issue. Hi, Mama. You're needing to go get milked. Yeah. I got those those green trimmers, okay. so you could do you could do their hooves today. Okay. Uh, we make sure to cover our wood because we do get rain that comes and goes during the summer, and I like to keep my wood as dry as possible. And we live in a valley that is surrounded by mountains with a lot of trees on them. But in the valley itself, we are somewhat limited on trees because we are in a desert. If, if I'm consistent in the way that I plant my, um, my little slips in the spring, we can supply our own firewood from this property as well over the, over the course of years. In. When you're doing ducks or chickens, you want to do it when there's no pin feathers. You don't want any developing feathers. You want them to all be developed. This one is perfect and super, super easy. In our backyard, we do deep mulch. And one thing that kind of turns people off to homesteading is that it makes your place look like a farm. And that's just part of life if you're going to produce your own food. Many times it will be untidy, especially if you have children that you're teaching. You're going to have compost that doesn't make it into the compost bin. And um, that's just kind of part of what happens. The other thing is that when you have supplies that are seasonal, a lot of times you have to store them somewhere and not everybody has a, an enormous shed to put it in. So if you want to, um, if you want something beautiful, there are moments of beauty in homesteading and in making your own food, but it isn't always picture perfect. Right now I have concerns about being able to replenish my deep mulch. It's hard to get straw here in our area anymore and uh, sawdust is quite expensive. 
We had the goats here earlier to replenish the, the squash bed, and these were the feeders we were using. But you can see we have a lot of mulch on the ground everywhere. The concern is, is that if you're having to purchase too many things, then um, you may not have the money, or it may not actually be available when you need it. So I'm just taking my sprouting seeds. Alfalfa goes a really, really long way, and it's a fantastic mulch. You cut... <laughs> Where are you geese? They don't like it when you're noisy. Um, so I'm gonna put this everywhere that I have protected from the ducks and it will self seed and spread itself. And that's exactly what I want. The ducks keep all of this weed free, all the paths, but I really need to get some self starting mulch going. Again, I don't want to put this anywhere that the chickens or the ducks can get into it. The reason being, they will scratch it up and eat the roots as it comes up, so it needs to be protected. All right, now I'm standing in front of what looks like a big empty field, and what it actually is, is my experiment station for my wild crafting trees, my non-grafted fruit. Um, these bushes here that you can't really see that look like twigs have never really taken off, and they have been here for six years. Um, they never really took off, and back there, Back there, I'll show you in just a second the ones that I planted um, at the same time that did take off. And I'll explain to you what I did differently between them. I had lost hundreds of trees when I first planted in our soil and I had used artificial fertilizer, I had used mulch, I had used, um, <laughs> I had done everything I could think of to bring these plants back and nothing worked. And what I found was I had some leftover rabbit manure tea that I'd been using, um, I think for my garden. It's just about as tall as me. It's huge, huh? Yeah. So we've been harvesting out of this bed for months, not months, for, a, well, maybe it's been months now. I think could have been. Weeks. Six, maybe six weeks. And now we're starting to see size on the things that are left, so we're really excited. You put one gallon of rabbit pellets, rabbit poop, in a 20 gallon bucket, right? And then you put water in and you just let it sit for a few days. And then you start to pull that water off and you water your plants with it. And what I found was that if I exclusively watered my plants with rabbit manure tea instead of just water, my trees stopped dying. And so I was hand watering probably 150 little fruit trees a day because I couldn't afford to have regular water touch the plants. They were in so much distress and they had, I, I believe it was a bacterial need. They needed bacteria and life in the soil to support them. And so rabbit manure tea was the difference between those in the front that were not dying. They were just fine. They weren't dying, they weren't showing signs of distress. These ones were dying. So I hand watered these ones with rabbit manure tea and they stopped dying, but not only stopped dying, they started to thrive. And then at the same time, I started to graze my ducks and my geese. In this, in this space, and it kept the weeds down and it added fertility to the soil. And now here we are and we have really beautiful, um, fruit trees that actually get less water than any of the other spots on the property. And that good start with all that good rabbit manure and that bacteria meant that they could utilize the nutrition in the soil and they could utilize the water. Make sure to change positions if you need to. Don't let your feet and your legs start hurting. And yes, I'm biting off more than I should. I've got so many more baskets of food to do and they're all going to go bad if I don't get them done today. So, see what we can
So these are Italian prunes, these two. And then I have my peach there. And then in the back of the house, I have many, many more. They are all grafted. I got them from a local nursery and they were very expensive. I think they were $50 a piece and that was eight or nine years ago. And the reason that I got them grafted is because they give predictable fruit. They also came with a warranty so that if they didn't make it the first year, I could get a refund or a new tree. One of the things I did to guarantee that my trees were healthy was that I planted fava beans at their base when I planted them. And the reason that I did that was to add nitrogen to the soil, but also to have an indicator plant that would tell me if my plants were in distress. If I plant something at the base and that thing starts to yellow or brown or turn black, I know that my tree is very shortly going to be in distress too. So I change what I'm doing depending on that indicator plant. I store a lot of salt and the reason for that is you use salt in canning and you use salt in preserving some meat products like bacon. You can use it for so many different things. If you don't have salt, you can't make kimchi. <laughs> If you don't have salt, you cannot make sauerkraut. And uh, I think that's very important. They're getting big. These are our winter projects. Kaya really wanted to start a garden super early. Um, one thing that I did buy more of the, than what I thought I would was vegetable seeds. I already had all the kind of frou-frou seeds that I wanted for the year, things I wanted to try. And um, in the end, I decided that considering the state of the economy right now, I actually wanted to have bulk amounts of those seeds. So I did go and purchase a pound each of my staple foods. And for me, staples would be Swiss chard, carrots, um, kohlrabi. Um, I already had some radishes and they're not as big a staple, but uh, storage peas. And what else did I have? And everything else, they, they make their own seeds faster like squash. I had quite a bit of squash seed on hand. I already had quite a few beans and for the most part if you're buying pinto beans or black beans from the grocery store those will sprout as long as they're not too old so I've got lots and lots of black beans that I can just go plunk in the ground and they'll grow just fine morning guys so this is the rabbit food bed so far I really like to plant this in February but we weren't here in February I take a couple seed packets and I just sprinkle it in here and then I cover it up with a little bit of soil and then as we go along through the year, I just go in and I thin it so that as they get bigger, they have enough space. And I do radishes, I do greens. We have some Chinese cabbage and other types of things. And I just go in through and thin and we thin and we eat it too. But this is what it looks like and it has been through three uh, really good frosts now and it's doing just fine. I love hotbeds because they think they keep things just a little bit warmer. So I hope what you take away from this video that I made is to prepare, not really prepare, but just to live your life in a way that you feel comfortable, that you can meet the needs of your family and that you're doing it in a way that you enjoy. That the animals that you choose to keep are animals that you enjoy keeping that you plant beautiful trees. And it's great if they can double eventually as firewood or that they can double as fruit trees. Um, I think it just takes a little bit more thought, but I really wanna point out that it shouldn't be a fear thing. It shouldn't be a burden on your family's um, financial resources. Do it a little bit at a time. You don't have to have 50 acres in order to be able to create a lot of food. Again, we're on an acre and a half 
and most of that I don't even grow on. Most of that the goats graze and a very small portion of my property is actually in intensive food production. That's just in my backyard. Uh. Okay, this is our not very fancy old compost pile. Under but I haven't planted anything here yet because I want to be able to harvest the compost um, while I need it. So I do have some little uh, willow. These are willows that want to come up from the living fence. So that's what those are, but they're not seeds. They are roots that have come over from the living fence. Okay, so what we have done now is we have a whole bunch of live branches and things. And I'm going to add some manure on top of that. And the reason for that is I want manure litter throughout this so that it'll heat up, it'll ke kill the weed seeds, and it'll start to decompose. The manure that I'm using is just from the goat barn. And it is just straw and goat manure, and it's been sitting there for a few years. Uh, some of it will be fresher than other, and we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle it in like seasoning. Alright, so this is what they look like right now. This is the rabbit garden that we also harvest out of. And then this one has um, comfrey and squash in it. And the reason for that is that squash is a heavy feeder and it wasn't fully composted. It was kind of half composted what we put in there. What we put in here was fully composted and it was already full of the last three years worth of limbs and things like that. So all we were doing was putting in a planting medium on the top. So it's doing really well. We didn't even add any fresh rabbit manure. The far one has been in for a week and it's still sinking. So we're gonna add another layer of straw, we're gonna water it down, and then we're gonna see if we can put some, maybe, I don't know what we're gonna put in it, we'll see. Uh, but this one's, this one's doing well. It keeps having squash that were, uh, what's the word? They're coming up on their own. They were in the compost that wasn't fully composted so they keep sprouting, but we keep freezing so they keep dying. So we have more, uh, summer squash coming up. They're trying. We've replanted some. We're going to put some from the nursery in and we're going to keep a closer eye on that frost warning. And then today I would like to see if we can get the cow panel up on it. But that far one, it's full of wood, it's full of paper garbage, it's full of straw, it's full of manure. And now we need to add some more and get it watered and see if we can get it to sink again.